This is the Roller Coaster Podcast, and I'm your host, Lucy Q. Life is a wild ride. It has twists and turns. It's scary, exciting, and downright fun. So throw your head back, arms in the air, and come along with me for the ride. Life is like a roller coaster, baby, baby. I want to ride, ride, ride. Episode 200 of the Roller Coaster will soon be here, and this is your chance to be part of the fun. I'm going to be recording this episode with coaches and listeners just like you. If you want to be part of the fun, head over to NectureGrowth.com. Sign up for free and RSVP for the November 18th event. All of the details will be under the events tab. I can't wait to see you there. What are you waiting for? Come join us. You know you're worth it. You've likely heard of the law of attraction, but have you heard of the law of unification? It's the understanding that all things, all energy is connected. We're all unique individuals that are fundamentally connected. Joining me today is Div, Div, pardon me, <laughs> Divneet Carlau, author of Mastering Creation, using the law of unification to share how you can create a new conscious life. Hi, Divni. Hi, Lucy. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. It's so, it's so, I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, and thank you because we're, you're actually in India where, as you shared, it's just gone, what is it, midnight, past midnight? That's absolutely right. It's 12.30 a.m. here. So I really appreciate you staying up late to have this conversation. And uh, I know you mentioned that the internet might be a little bit uh, choppy, but uh, I'm sure that we'll be able to get through this really good conversation today. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Perfect. So I guess my first question is what inspired you to write this book about mastering creation using the law of unification? Yeah, so this is a, this is an experience I had. Now, um, I had I had been like studying books, I had been reading spiritual texts and everything, but you know, this is something. Uh, it uh, there was there was this experience which happened in my life, which uh, which kind of you know pushed me towards uh, writing mastering creation using the law of unification, and. Uh, um uh, you know meditation and i used to do all these things uh, i used to read these books there was this very uh, there was this interest which uh, uh, which pulled me towards uh, meditations and spiritual texts uh, so everything carried out normally and uh, i was uh, working uh, with in my job i was living a normal life and then suddenly one day uh, my meditation practices they kind of of stopped work i experienced this plane of uh, plane of existence which is like uh, i call it the idea mind and uh, there was this force which kind of forced me to work upon this theory of creation and so i came up with law of unification and i did some research over these uh, uh, the ancient mythology text and also how um, the geniuses, the innovators, how they create their formulas, like how they create their creations using the formula. And uh, I wrote this book depending uh, based upon that. Okay, so I understand that the law of unification is basically that we're all connected. Can you maybe help us dive in deeper to have a, a better understanding of what it is and what it isn't? Yes, I think you like, uh, this is a very good thing that uh, you said, like law of unification is uh, that we are all connected. And yes, unification means that we are all connected. Definitely, it kind of, you know, uh, if we follow law of unification, definitely we reach a point where we get that, uh, uh, that kind of uh, recognition, that kind of realization where we can experience the whole or where we can experience that we are a part of the whole. Uh, but if we go deeper into this, uh, into law of unification, 
Uh, law of unification is actually, it talks about how the idea mind, how the plane of idea mind, uh, when unified with the plane of human mind, can help in creating new creations, can help man in bringing new creations to this world and uh, can help evolve the planet. So law of unification came from the, uh, the creative gods of the ancient mythologies, for example, Quetzalcoatl, Isis, and also from how the geniuses create their creations. So it came from the motives of creative gods and from uh, the, the, the minds, the minds of the geniuses, how the mind of the geniuses functions. So, uh, and the principle, the law was same. Like when I was researching over this, when I was looking on, upon these formulas, it was absolutely same. The underlying principle for the creation, for the process of creation was same. It was same for the creative gods. It was same for uh, the geniuses. And I even found uh, the theory or uh, the, the same principle in various other holy texts where it was written with like, they had different, uh, you know, kind of language. They used different languages. They used different symbols or they used different motives to, to you know, explain what this formula is, but when we reach when we reached out to the when we actually understood when I actually understood the formula, it was the same everywhere. And uh, the formula is the same. Uh, we have to like connect with the idea mind and bring in the ideas from the idea mind and bring it to the mind, which actually helps us create that formula or create that idea or turn that idea into the material world, like creating it, giving it form in the material world. And how we do it is by connecting with that idea mind, which is actually connected to a higher consciousness. Now this higher consciousness, it, it stores, like it, it stores the individual dharma of each individual which is actually the highest purpose of each individual on this planet. It sounds to me like the law of unification is very closely attached to the law of attraction because, you know, in the law of attraction, you know, they talk about what you think about, you bring about, but part of that is also having the belief that everything is connected and all infinite possibilities are out there. It's just for us to tune into it so that we can then bring it into our lives. Oh, we can say that, but there is definitely a major difference between law of unification and law of attraction. And I'll share with you right now, like, what is it? So, um, in law of attraction, what we are doing is we are, yes, you are right that we are like connecting with our, you know, with our vibration and we are trying to manifest it into the world. But what we are doing here in the law of unification is we are trying to, uh, we are trying to find the loopholes that are found, that are found in this law of attraction. Now, what are the loopholes there? Now, we, in law of unification, we, the first step, First step to connect with the idea mind is to go through to go through the process of rising higher or you know overcoming the lower levels of forces lower uh, levels of forces that are actually binding us towards our lower desires but nothing like this we do in law of attraction so we are rising above the lower desires and we are connecting with the higher desire and we are we are giving form to those higher desires in this world. And only if we overcome these lower desires, we can manifest those higher desires into this world and evolve our planet or evolve our lives. So this is how, uh, no, if, you know, what happens with our lives is we do not know what are, lower, what are the desires which are coming from a lower level of consciousness or which are coming from higher levels of consciousness. So we really need to first have that ability to practice, like we are going to do some practices to gain that ability to discriminate between the lower levels of forces and the higher levels of forces. Now I can explain you, like if I give you an example, 
Yeah, I was going to say what it, maybe mm -hmm. you can give us an example of what a higher and a lower desire is just so that we have a bit of framework. Right, right, right. So like um, if I say uh, the lower levels are the lower forces are the forces that bind us to these lower levels of consciousness are basically the uninquired beliefs are the uninquired desires which you know which are formed uh, during our maybe our young age or maybe when we were like we were not in a state of awareness or we were working from an unaware state so how this happens uh, suppose i'm just watching something maybe i'm watching something happening in my environment now my mind is picking up those things my mind is just kind of getting something information or maybe uh, something from the environment i'm just like getting it and i'm unconsciously i'm not aware here i'm just doing and i start doing the same thing because it is happening in my env environment i never inquired myself i did not do any self inquiry should i do it should i not do it i just kind of followed it just because i my level of awareness was low here so this is these are the forces so uh, it can develop your beliefs it can develop your desires it can develop attachments in you and these are all forces that are coming from lower levels of uh, consciousness now again uh, suppose it developed a desire of something a desire to manifest something like which happens in law of attraction right so we just we desire something and we try to manifest it using the law of attraction but what if that desire was not our highest duty what if that desire was just coming from a lower level of consciousness because we were looking around in the environment and we were seeing like everyone is desiring same maybe that is what i need or maybe uh, just because everyone has it i also want it now these are lower desires and we try to manifest it using law of attraction but we are not going to get fulfilled if we are going to manifest those desires using law of attraction so but law of unification does not work that way for for the working of the law of unification we need to first overcome these lower desires we need to rise higher on the plane of consciousness uh, we need to overcome these forces so that we can connect with the idea mind and get in touch with those higher desires or the highest duty that is uh, ordained to us by the higher consciousness what was you mentioned the idea mind what's that yes uh, now idea mind is is that plane where all the ideas uh, are stored now it can be an idea that is used to create something new to evolve the planet or maybe to evolve our lives it can be as simple as a, a simple you know if we have to choose something in our life if we have a choice if we have decisions to make what are what are we going to do there now this idea mind is the provider it is going to provide us with the right choices or maybe with the right decision so if there are many choices idea mind is going to tell us like what is there we need to follow or what is there we need to do in order to uh in order to not uh, hinder the evolution or in order to evolve the planet so because there are so many things you know we do not do those things just because of uh, maybe fear maybe we do not do it because we just fear old we are not able to evolve our lives because we we just do not know what is going to happen tomorrow so all these things all these forces or maybe fear which which hinders our evolution it can be it can be overcome using the law of unification and only if we connect with the idea mind where where this all these ideas all these decisions are there like um, the provisions that can be used in our lives okay so when you talk about the higher desires is that those things that are attached to our overall life purpose yes it is okay uh, so for me higher desire um, it is mostly the highest duty so if i talk about a higher desire 
it will most probably it will not only satisfy me it will not only fulfill my life purpose but in turn in turn it will also uh, satisfy or fulfill the purpose of the whole world and it will take care of the functioning of the whole so like if this world has to function properly if we have to like stop those things which are actually ruining our planet or uh, which is uh, which is hindering the evolution of our planet we all need to be connected to this idea mind and we all need to follow our own individual dharmas because individual dharmas can be different for each one of us it's not that if you are doing something and you are working uh, you are living a kind of life it's not necessary that i also have similar kind of dharma it can be my individual dharma is different from another person's individual dharma but we need to follow that because we get influenced like we get influenced by these lower desires or maybe our environment so the lower desires are those maybe they're material things that we're chasing not for any tangible reason besides it's just something you know everybody has that new shiny thing so mm -hmm. that's what we're chasing so that's a lower level desire but the higher level desires when you're actually able to connect with and understand your purpose that opens up the higher desires and that's where the idea of mind comes in and that's where the law of unification blends everything that's right that uh, that's absolutely right now i would not say also like um there are certain things um so there are material, certain material things which our planet needs to, you know, get evolved or maybe to uh, carry on the evolution. So I would, I do not negate the material as well because that is also important. A lot of times we need those things to evolve the planet, maybe for certain reasons. It can be anything. So we do not neg negate the material world, but what we are doing here is uh, only because those material things were not like we did not do any kind of self inquiry if we really do we really need that do we really need to do that is there a purpose behind that are we here to do that like uh, is this thing what i want is it is this a want or just like it can be because uh, there are so many material things it's not we, we cannot have material things because if we are going to provide you know abundance to the planet evolution to the planet the universe is definitely going to give us back so we do not negate that but we, what we are doing here is we are serving the highest the higher desire first of all and in return we are getting those uh you know uh material things maybe but we are not running after those material things yeah so instead of chasing the material things right and that's sort of i'm going to say that's a harder journey to take that if you mm -hmm. connect with your purpose mm -hmm and you're pursuing that then it's going to open up the ability to get the maybe some of those material things that you want because you're getting them on the journey of pers pursuing your purpose right 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 that that's absolutely correct and okay, that uh, makes sense it, it, right it is uh, i would not say it's it's a harder thing you know why this is harder <laughs> because we we never did that right we we were never told we are going we should do that what we are told right. is run after the material and this is kind of a conditioning you can say a programming well, oh, well, which has been done in our minds yeah. like but that's what yeah. our entire society is built on exactly it's, it's and built this is on the reason going it is to harder that's true yeah it's it's built on you know we call it that dreaded checklist where mm -hmm. you're you know you go to school you graduate you get married you buy a house you have your kids you do this you do all of these things you're hitting all of these benchmarks but they forgot to tell us that we're so you know that we can do all of those things but you're going to have more fulfillment more happiness if you're connecting with your purpose exactly and uh, we're just we're just afraid to, to take this another path we're all afraid 
And uh, what happened was I was on the same path. I was doing the same thing. I was uh, working, you know, in a normal, like I was working, living that kind of life, which we are, we're all, uh, we're all taught to do. And this is just, this opened up, this space opened up and I witnessed this plane and it was beautiful. And when you really saw, uh, when you really see something uh, which is so beautiful, you want to share it. And I think uh, this just happened. Uh, the book just had to come out. And this this is something I would say, uh, I would have not done that uh, in case I would not have had this experience because this experience opened everything and it kind of forced me to do this. So this was this, uh, I was kind of led to do this. So I had to. And yes, uh, and it's not uh, about me doing this. We are hearing so many stories around, uh, you know, people doing this, people uh, are changing or changing their work or changing how they were living. And they are having uh, massive, massive shifts in their lives. And there is a reason behind this, why this is happening, because I think this is the right time. I think there is a reason that the planet needs to evolve. And, and now that we can share so much information, we can accelerate this, accelerate this evolution by being, being one of them, being a part of this evolution, like by choosing to evolve, choosing to uh, be, a, be a creator in this evolution. And this is how, because the book is all about creation, how we can create using the law of unification and how we can become a creator in this process. Because the evolution is something which is going to happen ultimately. So it's not about, uh, even if we are not choosing it, I would say it's gonna happen anyway. We cannot stop it. So it's it's all about uh, Either we should uh, we should walk with it. We should you know be a part of it, and uh, uh, can be like walk in accordance with this, or we can just be unconscious and let it happen when it happens. So it's it's our choice after. But if we choose to be a part of it, and if we consciously choose, like no, this is happening, and I must choose that path. So it it, it will be easy for us. It I, is. And it's, it's yeah. something that I went through because, you know, for <laughs> most of my life, I didn't, it wasn't that I wasn't living my purpose. I didn't even know anything about living my purpose or that it's something that we should pursue. I was just living life on repeat. And it wasn't until that I hit a crisis point that I was able to create this massive shift in my life. And I have seen the world change around me. I have seen something different. And you're absolutely right. Once you make that, once you go through that doorway, you want to turn around and invite other people through. You've done it with your book. And it's what I do with the podcast and the online community that I'm building is that, you know, once you reach that new level, you want to bring everyone with you because you want them to feel as good as you feel. That's right. Absolutely. I connect with you here. And this is so true. And, uh, and we kind of, like you said, like we live, uh, live our life on repeat. And uh, when, when the world, when the universe is so creative, it kind of, it kind of, you know, limits our creative abilities. If we do that, we kind of do that on repeat and we're just not opening up enough. And if we open up, we just do not know what is, what is on the path, what is gonna come up, what purpose is there for the life. So, yeah. Definitely. Now, Divni, did you have any final thoughts, any last words of wisdom you wanted to share with the audience? Uh, I would definitely want to say that uh, we all need to walk upon this path of, you know, mastering creation or uh, any path that leads us to our evolution or the evolution of the planet and change all these things because it's really time and not only change, I would say we need to, these are something we need to challenge all these things which are already there. We need to challenge them and we need to rise above them to reach those higher levels and to bring them to this planet and to actually give them form on this planet. And it's not uh, very difficult, especially in our age, because this is the time we can do it very easily because it's happening right now. 
earlier if there were ages when we could have you know it could be difficult it could have taken more time but now it's it's more it's just it's easier than that and we can all do that and where's the best place for people to connect with you and grab a copy of your book yes so um i have my website uh, it's uh thebeatcarlal.com uh, people can visit my website and we have a button there which says order the book so we have all the retailers so people can reach uh, to and any of the retail retailers where they can buy the book if you're looking at connecting with divneet make sure you check out the show notes i'm going to have all of the links in there and divneet thank you so much for joining me in the middle of the night and sharing your story and your book Thank you so much, Lucy. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Want to chat or share your ideas about today's show? Pop me an email at hello at the rollercoasterpodcast.com. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at the Roller Coaster Podcast. Our theme song, Roller Coaster, was performed by the Lucky Setback. Audio editing by the one and only Jeff Quigley of Quigley Creative. Love is like a roller coaster, baby. Like a roller coaster, baby, baby.